So we're going to roll right in to our next guest for the night. So uh, you guys may know him as uh, NOS S10, NOS S10, as he's got the license plate. Um, it turns out the truck is not a nitrous truck anymore, but we will get some information on that. Um, if you guys watch this video, Street Racing Channel, we got Billy coming up. We got him connected. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Look, he started out with the headphones. We're good to go from the start. <laughs> Yeah, man, I came prepared. I've been watching that that one, and I saw you had issues, and I was like, ah, I'm gonna get ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that it was gonna be so bad in the echo, but hey, you know what? Everybody's got a set of damn headphones, so we, we should have no issues there. So, what's going on, man? How how you doing? I'm all right, man. Just wintertime stuff here. I've got the truck apart now. Um, had a little issue with it a week ago. Uh, melted a piston down, so. I was gonna ask. We gotta you get that, that fixed. And I wasn't yeah. sure if that was off limits or not because I know um, in the podcast you said you hadn't figured it out. It sounds like you got it figured out. So had a piston issue. Yeah, um, we were down in North Carolina for a little no prep race, and um, we had a wastegate issue, and it made like twenty six pounds of boost <laughs> within like a second or so. Yeah. And I usually only run maybe fifteen or sixteen on the street. And it uh, it hit like 8,300 RPM, 26 pounds, and it just pissed and let go. Um, it also flew the the alternator belt off, so I think that might have caused like a, a low voltage situation where the fuel pump might have right. lost a little bit of fuel pressure, and that could have I mean, contributed too. But one of those deals, man, just a snowball effect. <laughs> it happens, you know, and, and like anything else, it seems like it all comes all at once. It's never one simple thing or another. <laughs> It's always all on top of each other. Speaking of that race um, in North Carolina, I saw some stuff on there. Um, you know, I saw it from you guys. I saw it all over the place. Um, heard there was a little bit of, like, animosity there. You know what I mean? Some some folks weren't happy. Fucking, what, what happened? I mean, you were there. You're a little bit better. Uh, well, the the race was advertised as a 28-10-5 no W, uh, no traction control, which that's hard to police, right. uh, obviously. So in the driver's meeting, they had everybody up there uh, except for, like, one guy. And it happened to be the guy that had traction control. As it turns out. Yeah. He had a, a Davis box in the car. Like, you could plain – it's in plain sight. You could see it. You could see it's hooked up and everything. Like, there was no attempt and, to, uh, to get, you know – no, then they didn't. They didn't know the rule. I guess. I mean, it, it was kind of hard to find. It was kind of hidden in the event page or whatever. It wasn't really on the flyer, but it was. It was there. You know, right. people have been asking about it, and they've been telling them no traction control. So, they they announced that if there's anybody there uh, has traction control, that they're going to unplug the the device if it's in plain sight or if they can see it, um, and they're not going to be able to use it. So, I get paired with the guy first round that has the device, right? <laughs> no doubt. And he wasn't in the driver's meeting up there early enough to hear that. So, I, I just went up and I told him, man, hey, they're going to they're gonna check for your traction control box and they're going to unplug it, they said. And he got kind of pissy with me and he's like, he thought I was like throwing him under the bus or something. And I was like, no, man, I don't, I don't give a shit. I was right. like, I'm just letting you know so they don't catch you up there and fuck you. Yeah. yeah. So they don't catch you off guard when you're rolling up into the ready line and they're helping in your door and plugging shit. You know what I mean? Right. So I had that. And then uh, we went up to the promoters or whatever and we talked about it. And they were like, well, we didn't tell the guy over text because he texted the promoter and he was like, well, it's just twenty eight ten five. Didn't mention nothing about traction control. And he's like, "Well, that's my bad. I should have told you in that text or whatever." And I'm like, "All right, this is just going to be an argument because things are getting heated." Right. So I was like, "You know what, man? I don't care. You can use traction control if you want. I'm racing my race. You race yours. You know, I'm here to race. I'm not here to argue." So I was like, "You guys can enforce it however you want. I'm just I'm getting in my truck and I'm getting ready." So we raced. Uh, had that issue. Um, melted the piston down and he got me by a few cars because of it but right. you know i didn't i didn't have any issue with it i just i just wanted to make sure that he knew 
what was going on before they start yanking on wires and shit. Yeah, and that's that's the problem because you, it it can you know people are people are weird and, and sometimes you know what I mean. It, it's a lot on how they're feeling. It's not even about what you say. It, you know what I mean? Maybe he was having a fucking bad time. You know, from what I heard, he was late, so maybe he was already in a rush, fucking mad, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He, yeah, he showed up a little bit late. He's, I think he came from like ten or twelve hours away or something. I don't know. Yeah, but one of those deals. It sucks because it was, uh, you know, as far as 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 far as races go, kind of really was the like the last bigger one of the season. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that was pretty much the last one that I had seen advertised, and I wanted to get one more race in. You know, and it just so happens like last year, the last race of the year, I melted a piston down. It's just those last that last race. I'm always hurting something for some reason. (laughs) Just bad luck. Yeah. Now I've got a question because uh, I'm curious, and it came up um, as well. And I don't know if you've ever talked about it in your videos. If you have, I haven't caught it. Um, people still want to know why it has the NOS S10 license plate. Man, it's like it's known that way around here. And honestly, if you listen to it, it's it's got full exhaust. It's got mufflers. It's got high compression for a turbo engine. Right. If you just hear it idling you would think it's an NA motor or a nitrous motor when it's sitting there. And it's kind of a grudge thing. Like, I know I know most people know it. Like, I guess not most people, but some people will know it. But, um, and it's just known that way. Right. And I don't, I just haven't really wanted to change it yet. And honestly, I, my mom came up with this. She's like, hey, you don't have to change it. It can be not on spray S10. Hey. So, and in Thank my you. mind, now it's that. So, <laughs> so it's probably not going to go anywhere. Which is, uh, it's pretty dope, and, you know, you're right. I would think that in today's day and age, and, you know what I mean, as popular as the videos are and everything else, like, there are still people out there that don't know it yet or haven't haven't caught on or, you know what I mean, don't happen to know the details yeah. on the truck, so, um, We snuck know, up on a few people that, before. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you're supposed to. You're grudge racing, you know what I mean, out there on the streets, whatever you got going on, so um that's pretty damn awesome so it, it sounds like you guys are going to be down for a little bit getting this uh this piston thing figured out do you have a uh do you have a new game plan or um so the piston issue i I, I was running nitrous pistons like i the only thing i changed from my nitrous setup was the camshaft right that's the only thing i changed it had 12 and a half to one domes in it um it 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 ran really good on low boost. Um, it didn't have any issues the whole season until that, that happened, other than head gasket issues, which I should have been using Cometic MLX gaskets from the beginning of the season. Right. But I was running Fell Pros, and they just they didn't hold up. So Yeah. And- that was kind of nice, though, because the Fell Pros, I could burn through them and not hurt a piston. Right. Now put the good gaskets on it. Now it's hurting a piston. <laughs> now it's hurting a piston so, instead of that. It's like a fuse. Yeah, well, because I saw that, like, uh, what you call it, had some head damage. You had to go out and get that fixed and uh, yeah, to get it back together. So I'm assuming this season you guys are probably going to go with a combination a little more suited to the turbo life, you know, a different piston. Yeah, and... yeah I'm going to um, – I'm, I'm looking at a whole rotating assembly, and I'm probably going to go with something more like 11 to 1. Right. Impression, um, and I can probably get by with a little bit, a little bit more with that, a little bit better tuning window. Yeah, they got a little bit more room. Um, one of the big things that that's coming up, and it comes up a lot, uh, and I'm curious on your take on it. How many folks do you see? A lot of folks, uh, you know, with other trucks talking shit because trucks are hot right now. You know what I mean? It seems like every time you turn around, there's a new fast truck out there. So, you know, are you getting any call outs? Is there anybody getting you know, getting under the skin a yeah, little bit man. you want to take out. Man, nobody's really irritated me or anything like that, but there's a lot of people that are kind of egging it on, like, from the side. Right. Like I, just, like, I was on Facebook the other day, and this thing popped up, me in the shop truck from Oklahoma. I saw that, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, I've I've never even thought about racing them before, but if people want to see it, they want to see it, so... um I would be down to race. I'm always down to race, so. Yeah, I think what would be interesting because we've got so many people with fast trucks um, to to have some sort of way to orchestrate, you know what I mean, a truck shootout. 
Um, there's a guy, Tony, he's talking about, uh, about Tom Binkley. That's a local guy to us. Um, he's kind of like the, I, I like to call him the town hero. He's the man, like that dude is fast in an S10. Um, but we've got so many people spread out. So it'd have to be a pretty, uh, sorry. <laughs> it'd have to be a pretty, uh, you know, pretty set up deal to get everybody in the same place. I mean, how do you feel about That's that? That's going to be a cool race. That's going to be a cool race, man. Um, I hope, I hope we get some big media outlets out there for that because people are really going to want to see that. And uh, it's hard for me to film and race at the same time. So I feel Absolutely. like there needs to be there needs to be a crew there to capture that action. That's going to be cool. So, uh, so there's the, there's a lot of fast trucks out there. Is there is is now you're saying that like that's already in the works? Like there's a truck shootout coming. You're working on it. And so what's Absolutely, the, we were we were invited to that the other day, and uh, pretty much all the badass trucks that you could think of are invited. They're trying to get 32 of them. No shit. Where's that out? Because I'm I must have missed that one. It's uh it's in Mexico, obviously. Well, yeah. But uh, I can hit you up on a PM after and yeah, let yeah, you know shoot, where it's at. Shoot me that because uh you know like I said we got some local guys that they got some fast trucks. I mean there's a guy uh, Tom Binkley, there's a guy West Irvin, um, both Mexico friendly guys. You know what I mean? That I'm sure it, it depends. It's probably a hike, but um says Billy has the fastest street driven S10 out there. You know, I, I, I don't doubt it. Um, it sounds like Detroit hood TV has got a, a, a truck coming. Um, how did you, how now, did you I don't the- know about, I don't know about that statement because there's guys like, you know, pro with pro mod S10s that go on drag week and shit. Like yeah. there's, there's other one, but street raced, small tire and actually street driven. That's, it's gotta be up there, you know? Yeah, it does. And, and that's the thing. Like, People, uh, I had this conversation and, and people don't understand like street driven is kind of a weird term because you're talking about drag week. Like we see the shit that, that gets driven on drag week, but I'm here to right. tell you that I don't care who you are. If you lived in Delaware, that car is never getting fucking inspected. Like we got an inspection <laughs> process, like, like they're never getting that thing tagged in Delaware. So there's always right. like, loopholes as it turns out, there's other States. You don't even do inspection. You just paid a fee. Like that was mind blowing to me. Cause I'm not from one of those States. Um, so to see that, you know what I mean? Say anything street driven. Well, we've seen what happens on drag week, but it's also kind of a, a different set of rules. I think, I think you fit into the, the really, you know, the real street category. It's not, it's not a pro mod that just happened to get tagged and has a license plate on it. No, it's all there. It's stock suspension. It's the full factory frame under it. I mean, it's, it's on leaf springs, still stock leaf springs. Not that. Um, it's got stock front springs. It's just got a set of shocks and a set of Caltracks. And, and they work. <laughs> and they work because I've seen the videos. And uh, the one thing that, that, that I enjoy seeing is, you, you know, switching up. You switch the tires up, you know, radial, slick, this, that, and the other. And it's like you're not having problems getting down on either one. How much, how much time have you spent getting those setups figured out, you know what I mean, from one side to the other? Because it's, it's not the same. When we first went turbo earlier this year, um, we were we were kind of figuring that we'd have issue hooking. Um, we we had good luck hooking on nitrous last year, right? And um, it's one of those things. It's a learning curve figuring out the boost controller and everything else. Um, no traction control on it, just carburetor. Right. So it's one of those things where um, got a good good buddy, uh, JB Hall. He always says, "Make it, take it." And uh, throw a ramp in it, make it, take it. So that's, that's, our, that's our logic. <laughs> <laughs> the philosophy, if it works, it works. Um, Add a little good. weight, uh, make some shock adjustments, you know, keep testing and testing and, until you get it right. And go on from there. Yeah, I think, uh, and I had that conversation um, with Derek earlier. I think folks are just like misunderstanding of how much time and how much testing actually goes into getting down the street you know what i mean like it, yeah, it seems and, like in the summertime we're testing there. in the summertime in the in the spring we're we're testing three times during the week and then on the weekends too right. so it's it's about every other day um if we're racing heavy every day and and i mean that man that's gonna get tiring quick got a question what are you looking at as far as uh 2019 now i saw a bunch of stuff about uh midnight madness katie dryway which looks like it's blowing up um you want to tell us a little bit about that i mean that 
I, I think that's going to be huge this year. Yeah, I've got some really big announcements on that. Um, the season opener is May 11th, and we're going to do a, a really, really good money small tire shootout for that deal. And it's it's all no prep. It's as close as you can get to the street um, right. do it, what, while doing it legally. It's one of those things where y- you go to this track, and it's like a bucket list track. Um, there's no way you can't have fun. It's right. It's one of a kind. It goes straight. The shutdown goes straight up a hill like a roller coaster. It's it's the craziest thing because if anybody has never seen it, like you guys got to some, you know, if you've not seen it before, type it into the YouTube or something. Go check out one of the videos because it is wild. Like it does. It goes straight up in the air like a roller coaster, and you're like, holy shit. So and it's it's really it's really a good atmosphere there. It's a small town, like 800 people. Um, and they're all just great people. We never have any issues with fights or, you know, nobody ever gets stupid. So it's right. just a good atmosphere. Um, it's like family out there. Every time you go, uh, everybody looks out for each other. And we end and up racing. Usually we start at midnight and we race till 6 in the morning. So, And that's awesome. Uh, number one, it, that it's like somewhere located where there isn't neighbors that complain about that shit. Because I know that's a problem too. Like tracks There is neighbors, but... Yeah, there is neighbors right next to the track, but they, there's no noise ordinance there, so they haven't done anything about it. Oh, so then you guys are good to hook. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we've got lucky. Um, there's a lot of good people around there, and most of the time they end up coming out to the race anyways, uh, the right. neighbors. so <laughs> They're there watching. Got it. So what is uh, obviously – you know, we talk about the the trucks down right now. What is uh, what's big goals for 2019? Like, what are you trying to do this year? I really, um, I really want to be one of the fastest small tires on the street for sure. Uh, I want to travel around to different states, and uh, I want to go to all like like the other guys said. I want to go to all the cash days in each state and uh, just prove that we're one of the fastest. So. Yeah. I don't, is, I'm I'm not really into the big track thing for next year. I I've kind of tried out the prep stuff, and it's really not for me. Uh, you got to spin your shit like a lot harder on prep, right. and you hurt more parts and everything. The street and the and the really bad no prep thing is kind of my thing. Gotcha. Is there anybody uh, anybody in the cash days the no prep? Is there anybody that's like, you know what I mean? Um, uh, like a rival like do you have somebody that you just fucking every time you go out you end up racing somebody and it's like i've got a rival here in uh ohio named cj buckner he's got that raggedy ann mustang we've we've raced off and on since i was 16 years old and uh he's always one that i've wanted to beat and i think he's beat me all but one time and it was at a no prep and uh we're always gunning for each other. We're usually one and two here. So as far as small tire goes. And now uh, uh, something, something I learned about the truck, I thought was pretty cool. And I don't know if anybody knows, cause I, I think it happened like a Q and a thing or something. One time somebody had asked you like, why an S 10? And you were like, well, it's the truck that I had first. And it was the cheapest thing. Yeah. So like how long has that truck been around and been raced? Uh, since I was 15 and a half, uh, my dad went out and bought it for me when I was 15 and uh we bought it for like 1500 bucks and uh it had a v6 it, had, it was sitting on like 14 inch firebird wheels like it was atrocious right. it still is but it's not nearly as bad now uh, oh, we uh we wanted to bracket race it uh i started out in junior dragsters when i was young and uh we, we just wanted something to take and run like 12 you know right um i started street racing it with some of the kids local in my town and it got beat once by an import, and I was like, "This can't happen again." So we <laughs> just—I you know started heads up racing it, and I haven't really been bracket racing since. <laughs> so my my question is because you talk about uh, about hideous, and like I don't know why they won't leave it alone. But what is up with everybody bitching about the paint job? Like, man, it's an S10. You know, if if I paint it one solid color, it's just going to look like every other S10. That's my that's my thing. 
but and I just don't understand like why people are so harped on it. Like every video, like I think one of the times we shared a video and the guy commented like, "Oh, he needs to paint that thing or something." I'm like, "It's not going to make him any faster." Like I don't. What do you? Right. <laughs> you're missing the point of the video. Like there it is. <laughs> I don't know if I can zoom in or it, not. It is but... there. <laughs> Damn, in the shop. Yeah, so, it's one. Uh, one question I got. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about too. Is you've got uh, you got the podcast. You guys started that um, the other day and started talking about it. I listened through it a little bit. You know, made the comment. The Canadians were nice. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah. Um, what's, what's the plan with the podcast this year? What are you guys looking to do with that? Man, uh, I really need some content to get through the winter time. It's hard here in Ohio with, you know, the weather and everything. Uh, it's something where you can't put everything into a video sometimes, everything that goes into your experiences and stuff. So it's one of those things I'd like to be able to talk about some of those things and go back and revisit stories or different things that happen. Yeah, and no, uh, we can we can use it to, you know, promote races or promote other people and their cars, you know, invite them as guests and things like that. And, uh, and you know, it's funny you mentioned that because talking about the content thing is exactly why we're sitting here right now. Because I'm like, man, it's right. like, you know, what I mean, there's no racing going on. I mean, I can go out in the garage yeah. and work on my shit and record it, but that's about it. You know, it's hard it's, in the wintertime, man, for racers, unless you live way down south or out west or something. Yeah, because I think uh, talking to some of the Oklahoma guys, I think they're still getting down and, you know, we're talking about still stuff upcoming. And I'm like, man, now the Detroit Hood TV guys are going crazy and they're racing in like in January. Yeah, they're racing this weekend, man. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, oh, this shit is this and they said if it's yeah, they said if it snows, they're going to get out the snowmobiles. They're just going to they're they're doing crazy stuff up there at Milan, which is wild because like, man, I'll tell you a couple years ago, we had a. a a new year's no prep deal that was supposed to go down and like it just kept getting canceled and rescheduled and everything and i'm like oh it just sucked but i wish that that folks you know it sounds like whatever it is that they're doing they got it figured out because they got people showing up people are racing and they're racing in january like they're still having fun absolutely man and it's it's one of those things where if they weren't doing it there they'd be doing it out on the street still they still street they're still they're street racing out in detroit right now um they're street racing in new york still like it it might be cold but that don't mean the action stopped so yeah getting it in so if is there anything uh anything looking back on this season like anything particularly funny or something you thought that was cool to share that you didn't get a chance to share yet you know what i mean looking back on the memories now that uh, everything's kind of calmed down and and we're in slow motion mode uh i don't know there's a lot of memories man um when we were in Alabama at the JJ Arm Drop race, probably one of my favorite memories of this year was just being on the starting line with JJ and uh, that whole crew and seeing their antics and stuff. And uh, I called out uh, Mallory Gully first round of that right. no prep race. And uh, JJ looked at me and said, we ain't scared of that wheelie and truck. <laughs> and I was like, he knows who I am. That's cool. Yeah, so I think that's I think... one of my favorite things. I think that video clip right there, like that 10 second, like you down the street, balls to the wall, fucking tires in the air has made its way fucking everywhere. I think everybody's seen that at this point. Yeah, I think it, it got like a quarter million views or something, you know, and uh, it's just one of those things where we test there a lot. And that spot, it hooks pretty good in the rubber. Uh, it's not like a track or anything by any means, but it's smooth. Right. And um one of those things where sometimes, you know, I know what the truck's going to do. Sometimes I just want to have fun and, and do it. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I can make it not wheelie or I can make it wheelie. It's just one of those things. And if I want to make a viral video, I can. <laughs> right, exactly. If I wanted to look good on video real quick, I got you. Yeah. So, all right, we're, we're about wrapped up. Uh, it's getting close to that time. So uh, another thing I like to do is real important. You know what I mean? A lot of folks um, – you know, I know you do a lot of work yourself, and you got your dad um, and everything going on. Is there anybody you want to thank, you know what I mean, from the 2018 season that was real helpful, beneficial to the program? Yeah, definitely my dad to start out with, man. He, uh, he's, he's really done a lot for me. He, he tunes the truck. You know, he goes out and makes runs for me for parts and things like that, and he's always there, you know, to help out. 
um, help me test. He's, he's there all the time with advice and things like that. And sometimes, you know, I don't trust his advice at first, but I'm learning to trust him now a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. It's, it seems like when I, when I do it, it works out and sometimes it just doesn't hit me right away. But, uh, Another guy, AJ Luckett, he did all my fab work on my turbo piping and stuff and my right. exhaust, and he did an excellent job. Uh, he's, he's a small-time guy. He's, he's not real big on Facebook. He doesn't have a page or anything, but if you look up AJ Luckett, he's doing some really nice work. Um, he's, he's helped out a lot in setting up the boost controller and uh, all, my, all my stuff. Gotcha. Um, JB Hall, uh, suspension tuning. He's a guy out of West Virginia. He's a good old boy. Uh, we met him street racing a couple years ago, and he's always, anytime you need him, message away, and he's there to give you suspension advice. So other than that, just my family and friends that have been there along the way and helped out. I've got tons of, uh, tons of people here in Columbus and uh, the surrounding area that come out to these races and they're always there to help hold the trucks, you know, steady or something to burn out or right. you know, back me up straight. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of people I could thank. Well, somebody said you better thank skinnies, but I think the giant fucking banner in the background does a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skinny yeah. street sauce. They've, they've come on board this year and helped me out. They send me some prep and uh, I've used up a shit ton of it. So, and it's definitely went to good use. <laughs> That's awesome. It's helped yeah. me win. It's helped me win a lot of races on the street this year. It's probably helped in some of them wheelie videos too. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. that one that went <laughs> viral. <laughs> if I if I had to guess, there was probably a little sauce on that uh, on that road there. Well, look, man, I appreciate you catching up. Um, it, it's great having you on the show. Great talking to you. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we got some time. You know what I mean? In the downtime, we're able to do some stuff like this. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, definitely stay tuned when, uh, somebody had asked about the schedule for the podcast. So when is that like a, are you guys going to do weekly or when can folks look, look for the next one? Or? Um, we're planning on doing it weekly. It's, we're not going to have like a set day that it happens. I don't think, but we plan on doing it weekly. Uh, if not bi-weekly, uh, we've got to get some content out there in the winter time and there's no end to it, man. We could, we've got so many guys that we could talk to or invite out here. So absolutely. It's, uh, everybody's just a phone it's, call away really at this point you know what i mean yeah yeah and if i if i can't get somebody here i'll call them on the phone you know we'll have a phone conference or whatever but, whatever it takes well look but i appreciate you tuning in um thank you very much i i appreciate you being on the show we'll we'll probably catch up on another episode and uh catch up on what's going on with the truck but uh i'm gonna get you off here now because i think if we can, we've got one or two people that want to hop on the live stream as well. I know Detroit was talking about something, so I'll show them some love. Let, let them get there. Sweet, man. And we'll go from there. Hey, thank you for having me, buddy. All right. I'll see you. Have a good night, bud. See you, man. All right, guys. So there was Billy. I mean, I'm telling you, if you haven't seen the video yet, it, it went pretty viral. I, I highly doubt that you haven't seen it. I mean, it's that S10 just taken off on what looks like a bare road and it's you know just balls i think it's like 10 seconds long is it and it's just straight wheelie like past the 60 foot it's nasty um so really appreciate him you guys may know him uh street racing channel on youtube on facebook as well um he does all that stuff and they've got the podcast and everything now so let's check it out uh